All right. Good morning, everybody. This is our week five lesson. Hopefully you guys have been keeping up with the lessons beforehand. This is going to be our last lesson before the break. OK, so uh, as always, I'm going to go back here and click on this for everybody. Just to give you guys a glimpse, make sure that you're going through and completing all the lessons in the order that they're um, laid out in, okay? So we're in week five. Uh, if, you are, if you haven't yet, Judith, go ahead and click on the this link right here and then sign in right there, okay? We're gonna go over the PowerPoint first and then we'll uh, go into the lesson for today, okay? I'm gonna turn my camera off so we can uh, focus on the lesson itself. All right, so what are we doing this week? Uh, for those of you that have already caught up in the lessons, week three and four were about writing a personal narrative, right? It was about taking the time to think about how writers create, and more importantly, why they choose to kind of capture a moment in their life and then write about it. Hopefully you guys were able to do that or will be able to once you complete your assignment. For this week, we're gonna kind of take a step back since we don't have, I don't wanna start something uh, too big before a break. We're gonna look at evidence using textual evidence and focusing more on vocabulary, okay? So hopefully, Judith, you should be logged into this one um, at the moment. So what are our objectives for this week? Well, we're gonna read, uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna read an interview with a, it's about a YouTuber and how she describes the process in that she does that she takes in recording videos so she's a professional youtuber which basically means she her job is recording videos and putting them on the internet so we're gonna take a we're gonna read a little bit about that as she's being interviewed so it's a little different type of reading writing we're gonna write we're gonna practice answering questions using evidence from the interview and the vocabulary that we're about to look at here in a few minutes okay so that's going to be our focus is not only responding but using evidence so this is really important going back and looking at what you read and then using something from it in your answers okay and something i want us to think about for this lesson towards the end, what did you learn about the ways in which the internet has allowed people to find jobs that didn't exist before? I mean, we think about, think about the jobs that exist now, you know, you're still, uh, most of you will be really relatively still re really young compared to, you know, someone like myself, the internet really did change some things. And now we have a woman who basically gets paid to just record herself and put videos online. It's really interesting. And there's actually a lot of other people who get paid a lot of money to do uh, to do the same thing that she's doing, right? And just a reminder for you guys, uh, when you watch this later, these are working links uh, here to the side, okay? So this is something we're gonna use today. The dictionary is, Going to take you here. Uh, Shakespeare, Shakespeare research, and these are all links that you can access. Okay. All right. So let's look at the first question. Did you know that there are some people who make money on YouTube? How do you think this happens? So I want you to think about this question before we actually start reading more about a specific person. How, how is it that people can make money on YouTube? How do, how do you think she makes money? I mean, do people buy her stuff? I mean, what, what exactly, um, how is it possible that someone can make money just by making videos? It's kind of interesting. And a lot of people don't understand how that happens. 
But go ahead and take a few minutes. Uh, I'll give you a few minutes to write your response. And this is more of an opinion question to kind of gauge what exactly you know about uh, YouTubers. Because there's a lot of them. There's YouTubers who play video games. There's YouTubers who, uh, there's a, there's videos of guys who review cars. I mean, <laughs> like they go outside, they show you the new car, and they get paid to do that. So oh, it's interesting. For those of you that are watching the video later, you can go ahead and pause here and respond, and then play the video when you're ready to move on. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to look at the vocabulary. So step one, we're going to review the, we're going to open the previewing vocabulary document that's on Google Classroom, and you're going to complete the following boxes as stated. So go ahead and go back. So we're going to come back here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to click on this assignment right here and go ahead and open this. So we're going to open this up. It's going to look like this. So one important part before reading anything is thinking about some of the you know language that's going to exist in the in the text that's going to be that could be difficult to understand. So I chose these three words from today and I just want to review them to make sure we understand what they mean. Okay. So the first one we have is fluctuate, okay? So I already included the dictionary definition. What does that mean? To change level, strength, or value frequently. So if we're, um, if we're talking about, well, we're gonna be reading about a YouTuber, fluctuate, what does she do? She, she records herself, right? So this, Kind of gives you an idea of what it's gonna how this word's gonna be used right now your definition this is what you're gonna include here later go ahead and um, fill this box in so you can just type into the box in your own words what does this word mean to change level this is the dictionary definition but what does it mean to you so you can put it in your own words and then in this part draw a picture, write an example that will help you remember what this phrase means. So something we can also do is find an image. So if you feel comfortable using Google, we can search. Now, if we look at, if we just type it in and search in Google, kind of get these weird graphs, right? But if we go back to the definition, to change level, I mean, this, this makes sense, right? You can see this, it's changing level, just this picture itself is uh, it's fluctuating, right? It's going up and down. So if I wanted to, let's say I want to use this picture, I'm going to copy, we're going to right click, copy image. So if you don't feel comfortable drawing or writing an example, you can always include a picture. So we're going to right click, and there we go. Okay. So all you have to complete is this part in the middle, which is your own definition. I'm going to delete that because I don't want to edit everybody's. OK, the second one is roll off your back, right? Now, this is a different, it's not an actual word. It's a phrase. It's an, Idiom that, this, that says to not let something bother you or worry you or get the best of you. So roll, roll off your back means that you're not letting something, you know, affect you, right? So if something, something happens to you, uh, this is something that they used to say more, you know, years ago. They'd be like, oh, 
you know, you go to your mom, oh, mom, somebody made fun of me at school. Your mom could say, oh, just forget about it. Let it roll off your back, right? So it's an expression. And the last one, abbreviate, which what does that mean? To make something shorter, right? So again, these are word, you can use these phrases, you can type them in to Google and find images. And if that's what you feel more comfortable with, you're gonna include those here. This is gonna be part of your grade, okay? So we only have three vocabulary words that we're gonna look at. Um, so just to gain an idea of you know, how these are gonna fit within the context of what we're gonna read today. Okay, so kind of did, kind of reviewed these a little bit. Think about how these vocabulary words or are or could be important with someone who records themselves. So if we're thinking about someone, someone online shooting videos, fluctuate, roll off your back, abbreviate. These are things that she's gonna kind of discuss in her reading, right? Okay, so we kind of already did this. You're gonna open Google Classroom. You're gonna complete this activity. For those of you that are watching the video later, uh, make sure you respond to all six of these boxes, right? This is gonna be part of your grade right here. If you need help, you can always go back to the dictionary. And if you don't remember where that is, it's gonna be at the beginning of the slideshow. It's gonna be one of those links, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the reading for today. If we go back, Google Classroom, go ahead and click on here, teaching art on camera. You're gonna open this document, okay? So let's take a look at this. So we're gonna, I'm gonna read this. We're gonna read it together. You're gonna follow along with me. Um, it's gonna be, it's, it's about a YouTuber. Her name is Casey Stevens. She talks about her job creating art videos on YouTube. So uh, this is what she gets paid to do. Just really, I mean, if you think about it, that's a cool job. You work from home. You don't have to go in. You don't meet anybody. You know, you don't work with other people. You just kind of record yourself and then put them online and you get paid. So this is her. Uh, see, she looks kind of, looks interesting. She's wearing a pepperoni suit and like a pepperoni hat or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so let's let's take a look at this. This is an interview, right? So it's a different type of reading. This isn't an article. This isn't a story. It's still considered nonfiction, but it's not an expository text so much as you know something you're gonna read in the newspaper, right? So let's take a look at this. Uh, if you want to open it up and have it on your computer, you're more than welcome, or you can watch it. I'm going to scroll down and read it to you on this video, okay? So scholastic art, it's going to be broken up in two sections. You can see here, scholastic art is the person asking the questions, and this is her responding, okay? Now, if you notice, they, they write the names here, and then after that, it's a, it's, well, we're using one of our vocabulary words, right? It's abbreviated, see? <laughs> so, oh, let me go back. So, all right, I was gonna say, where did it go? So it's abbreviated, that's why it's shorter. So just so you guys know, in case you're wondering why it says SA and CS, well, they abbreviate the these two, right? Her name and Scholastic Art. Okay. So the first question, what is your job? My students call me a YouTuber. I am an elementary art teacher and I make videos to help teach my students. Making videos is a fun way to share information as an art teacher. So here we learn that she's not only a YouTuber, but she's a teacher. So it sounds like YouTubing is her second job, right? It's her secondary uh, job. She doesn't she doesn't work full time as a YouTuber. A lot of people do, but she doesn't, I don't think she does. When did you start making YouTube art videos? 
about five years ago, I had jury duty. So I was away from school for a long time and I didn't know when I'd return to my job. I created plans for the substitute teacher using a video. I thought if students saw my face, it would be like I was with them. Since then, I've discovered how much I enjoy making and sharing videos. So her story is, re is really similar to a bunch of other YouTubers. They don't set out to do it. You know, I don't, I think for most of them, they don't wake up and decide, you know, I'm gonna just record videos and make money. Usually it's, it's because of some sort of, you know, hobby or in this case, it's something that's required. She needed to do it for her other job and it ended up being something she enjoyed. Uh, next question, how does your on-camera teaching compare with your in-person teaching? How I teach in the video is pretty much how I teach in the classroom. I teach young children, so I like to make the videos engaging, which translates to me being very silly like fluctuating my voice and tone faster when I want them to get excited or slower when I need them to focus. Teaching is a lot like being on stage. You have to read your audience, capture their attention, and keep them interested. Everybody naturally gets quiet when a video is on. So, uh, sounds like her teaching style in the video is really similar to how she teaches in her own room. And if you notice here, we have a version to different form, but it's still the vocabulary word we looked at earlier, fluctuate. Uh, so what did we say fluctuate meant? Well, to change level, strength, or value. Come back here to the text. I like to make the videos engaging, which translates to me being very silly, like fluctuating my voice and tone. So it sounds like she kind of goes up and down, right? Kind of like we were looking here. Her voice is going to go up and down depending on how the kids are in the room because she teaches little kids, right? Next question. <clears throat> Can you describe your process? Usually I start with a project idea. Before filming, I make a couple of versions of the project so I can work out all the kinks. Sometimes I just hit record and edit the video by abbreviating steps, erasing background noise, and doing a voiceover. For other videos, I demonstrate each step, which takes longer to film and edit. So what does she do? Some sounds like she has a you know different process depending on what she's doing. So I mean, sometimes she just you know, goes for it, kind of like what I'm doing right now. You know, I didn't, I'm recording this live, so I just record and then just kind of go with it, right? Or other times she does each step, stops, and then puts it all together. So um, what are the most important skills for a YouTuber to have? The big thing is to find your own voice, be inspired by other YouTubers, as long as you also stay true to yourself. People really respond to YouTubers who are very much themselves on camera, whoever that may be. So, um, this seems to, uh, I, I guess if you ever decide to be a YouTuber, I mean, this makes sense, you know, kind of look at everyone else and be your own person. I think if you looked up just a bunch of people on YouTube, you'd see that they're all very different and no one really, they're not all trying to do the same things, which is good. Uh, what challenges do you face in making art videos for YouTube? Sometimes people will say unkind things on YouTube or other social media platforms. You just have to remember that unkind comments have nothing to do with you. Let it roll off your back and move on. So, uh, she's being asked what challenges she faces. And I mean, this makes sense, right? The internet is full of people. And just as, just like we have a lot of good people, we also have some bad people. And uh, 
this is where we have that expression that's part of our vocab for this week. Let it roll off your back and move on. So she's basically saying, don't let it bother you, right? Don't let it get the best of you. You just got to move forward because people will say things. And apparently she's gotten some comments that haven't been too nice, right? Uh, what's your favorite part about being a YouTuber? Being able to share and connect with people all over the world who are interested in creating is magical. I learned so much from YouTube. It's cool that someone took the time to create content because they have the knowledge and want to share it and give back. So, um, you know, it, it, she's right. The internet allows us to connect with so many different people and she loves teaching art. Uh, being on YouTube allows her to do that at any time, at any part of the day, which is really cool. Do you have any advice for readers interested in making YouTube videos? Capturing viewers' attention and keeping their attention is what's really going to be important when teaching young kids and anybody really on YouTube. Good lighting is also important. Filming outside on a sunny day or very close to a window or grabbing every light you can find and aiming them in the direction of where you're filming is helpful. So this advice is seems to be more practical, right? So if you ever decide to be a YouTube um, or make YouTube videos, uh, this would be good advice, right? Now, if we could scroll down to the bottom, there's a little bit of information here. Let's say you want to be an art YouTuber. Uh, getting started, what can you do? Research and watch YouTubers who inspire you. Take video production and video editing classes. Uh, build a strong social media presence, right? These people who make money on YouTube, it, it sometimes it took, it's a process that takes years because you have to build, uh, you know, a, a channel that people will know who you are. Plus, you have to be really good at editing and taking, you know, cutting up videos, clips, putting them together. It's it's a long process, right? It's not something that you just shoot and put up online, or at least not always. Uh, do I need to go to school to be a YouTuber? Some art YouTubers have a bachelor's degree in fine art, education, film, or information technology. So she probably went to school and got her bachelor's in art so she could be a teacher. That's how she has her degree, but she doesn't need one to just be a YouTuber, right? Uh, salary. So let's see how much money they can make. So based on this, they can, it can range from 10000 to 80000 a year. That is a lot of money, right? That is a good amount of money to make uh, just for recording videos, right? Even this, if you're working as an art teacher, she's already getting paid. This is extra money, right? It's extra income for someone like her who wants to do this on the side. Okay, so we got, uh, we gained a nice perspective, right? Of what it means to, what it's like to, um, shoot videos and if you go back if we go back to Google Classroom I included a link here which you don't have to watch right now but so this is a video of her that she shows you how to draw a wizard castle so just kind of skip through here so yeah, this is what her videos look like. Well, this is one of them. You can see she kind of walks you through it. Um, and she goes over it. I just turned off the sound, but really great instructions. Kind of show you, this one is 25 minutes long. Not all of them are that long, but um, you can see she's shooting it from above. So all you see is the work in front of her. So again, that's where all the, the details and you know, learning how to use the equipment, learning how to record, come into play, right? Okay, so you can watch that if you choose to, that's up to you. All right, so if we come back to our PowerPoint, 
And uh, we're going to skip that. How well did you grasp the material? If you can move that whenever you get a chance. We're going to do one more thing before we leave. Let's take a look at this. So go back through to Google Classroom and go ahead and click on this. This is called, this is going to be where we use textual evidence, OK? Go ahead and open this up. You should all have a PowerPoint. And you're going to respond to the PowerPoint. This will be part of your grade for this week, OK? So we already looked at vocab. We go back to our objectives. Uh, we already reviewed the vocabulary part. Now we're going to answer questions using evidence from the text, OK? So read the article. We've already read that. Please be sure to use quotes from the text in your response. Also be sure to include quotation marks along with the page number, OK? This is important. Something we're going to practice. It takes a lot of practice, but uh, including an example here, if you're going to respond like this, in the article, the author says, quote, I like my job because it's fun and interesting. You also want to include the page number. Okay. So we just have a few questions here. We go back. First question. What does a YouTuber do? Okay. So think about that. If we need to, we always go back to our text, right? What does a YouTuber do? Well, I think that was one of our questions. So if we go down, um, where is it? Right here, right? I mean, this is a more literal uh, response. But just in general, what is it that you think a YouTuber does? So you're going to click on here, and you're going to respond to this question. Make sure you use complete sentences, right? So we're going to write a YouTuber, and then you'll complete that, right? Make sure you use evidence. So if you need to come back here, you're going to copy a quote. So let's say a YouTuber um, let's see. A YouTuber, well, one of the things he does or she does is they make different versions of a project. So let's say I'm going to write that, right? A YouTuber makes different versions of a, makes a couple versions of the project before she actually starts to record herself. So if you're going to respond to that, if you notice, I put in quotation just the part that I copy, right? And if I go back, I'm going to use the page number, which is going to be right here at the bottom on the corner. So that's something we're just going to practice this week, just so we get the hang of it. Just put the number. And then, well, this is, this is just an example, right? I don't need this anymore. So. This is basically what we're looking to do to this week, right? Is to practice using these quotes when we're reading something and including it in the project or in our writing and then using page numbers, okay? So I'm gonna delete this one and let you guys record your own response, okay? So that's just an example. Second question, <clears throat> what did you learn when Stevens is asked, how does your on-camera teaching compare with your in-person teaching? So this is one of the questions, right? So if we go back here, 
uh, where is, like I said, that's one of the questions. It's going to be this one, right? So this is her response for this section. In this box, just kind of tell me, what did, what did you learn, right? What did you learn about her when she's comparing these two? I learned that. And then again, just like the previous question, you're going to respond. And you're going to be using quotes or using evidence from here. So feel free to copy anything from here. Again, if you do, make sure you put in quotation marks. And you include the page number, which is going to be located right down there. Okay. Okay. Next question. What skills do you need to be a YouTuber? I believe that was also another question. Uh, what are the most important skills for a YouTuber to have? So this question could be answered from this, but it could also be answered from just the whole thing itself, right? What are some of the things you need to be good at in order to be a uh, a successful YouTuber. So, um, I mean, that could be an assortment of questions or responses, right? Next question. We're going to look at vocabulary, right? What does the author mean when he or she says, let it roll off your back and move on when she is asked, and this is in the section, what challenges do you face in making art videos for YouTube? So I included this for you guys, so you can delete this part, right? You don't need this section, you're just gonna fill it in. I believe the author means blank when he, she says, let it roll off your back and move on. Furthermore, I think she's trying to say, why? What is she, what is she trying to say in this phrase, looking at this specific part, right? And if you can't remember where it is, it's gonna be in this question right here. Right, this part right there. So what do you think she means by them? That's what you're gonna respond to here on this, these two boxes. <clears throat> okay, and the last question is some questions. What questions do you have about the job of a YouTuber? So after we've already read it all, right? Uh, kind of thinking about this profession, this this teacher, what questions do you have about someone who wants to be a YouTuber? If you if we look down at the bottom, I mean, kind of get an idea of how to do it, gives you what you need to do to start it, you know, what education you might need. But do you have any other questions? What's something you would want to know before you begin trying to create your own channel? and trying to trying to uh, make money recording videos for whatever it is. So go ahead and respond to that as best as you can whenever you're ready, right? And just for that, real quickly give you guys, um, show you something that you won't believe. I believe this is the one. There is a YouTube channel. Is it this one? It's this one. Yeah, there's a YouTube channel where someone unboxes toys, Disney toys, and they make, I, th I believe I read an article, this person made like over $60,000 a year. And this is all they do. <laughs> so they don't do anything else. They just get toys and take them out. Uh, so there are many, many people online, just like our uh, art teacher, who make tons of money doing this. And if you look right here, I mean, look at that. Half a million people have watched this video. She has almost 12 million subscribers. So we go back to, 
we go back to our PowerPoint, to that original question, right? What do we learn about the ways in which the internet has allowed people to find jobs that didn't exist before? Well, what did we learn? Um, you know, how, how has the internet changed things and allowed people like this, that person we just saw? I mean, you don't even see her. You just see her hands and all she does is unbox and take out toys, which is, uh, and she makes really good money. Okay. So those will be, that assignment's gonna be found here in this PowerPoint. So make sure you guys complete this. And when you finish, you're gonna have something on the right that tells you to turn it in. It's not gonna show up on my screen because I'm the teacher. We're gonna have something over here in the top right hand corner to make sure you complete that assignment, okay? So uh, Judith, since we're the only one in the room, using the chat box, here, can you tell me if you don't want to respond with you know speaking? What what did you learn about um, looking at this question right here? What did we learn about the ways the internet has allowed people to find jobs that didn't exist before? Did you did you know that people made money recording themselves? Uh, if you can type your type an answer into the box for me. Uh, or you, Mr. Soifer, if you're uh, if you're still available, do you mind sharing? Did you know that people made money doing this? Uh, something simple as taking toys out, or would you ever want to do something like this, Judith? You think this is something you could do? Record yourself, make some money. Oh, okay. Well, good. Make a lot of money, right? And you don't have to, well, I was going to say you don't have to go to school, but it's really interesting. I, I think it is because anybody can do it, right? Let me turn my camera on now. So, yeah, uh, Ms. Stoifer, maybe this is something you can do on your on the side, on the, on the side, right? Make some good money. Uh, hopefully I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'm serious. These people make a ton of money and it ranges from anything. Clothes, playing video games. I mean, it's anything as long as you get enough people. All right. But yeah. Oh, okay. So let's go kind of close the lesson for this week. So hopefully don't forget you're going to respond to these questions. You don't have to do anything else. You really don't even have to put your name other than on the first box because it's going to be under Google Classroom. Make sure you complete the assignments, which is going to be this one. Uh, for those of you that are watching it later, make sure you go through each slide and respond, okay? So if it has a slide like this, this is part of your grade. You have to respond to these questions, these boxes here, okay? And that will be combined with your assignments here for your grade, okay? All right, I'm gonna, yeah, I mean, you could do that. <laughs> Walmart toys, I don't think it really matters, right? I think the point of this is, it doesn't really matter what you do, just that you have enough people who watch it, right? Uh, there's another lady before we get off, who eats, that's all she does. I think it's in China, She's, she just eats. And that's it, she makes a lot of money. <laughs> she cooks a lot of food and she eats it in front of you and people watch her. So a lot of stuff people would be willing to, to view online. But okay, I'm gonna, in the recording and I'm gonna hang on for a little bit if you have any questions, Judith. But for everyone else, y'all have a great week, have a great break, stay safe. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or send me a message in Google Hangouts. You can also send me messages in here, okay? Just click on me and I'll be up here and you can send me, a, there's a little tab here that you'll be able to view, that you can email me, all right? All right, you guys have a wonderful 
break and I will see you guys in a couple weeks. This lesson will not be due until the 4th of December, okay? It's going to be the week after Thanksgiving. So you guys have plenty of time to catch up on all your lessons. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, you guys have a wonderful break and I'll see you guys.